let's assume that you need to deploy one full-fledged application which consists of front-end app and the back-end database. This database stores all the data and provides it to the front-end app whenever it is required. Since the data is sensitive, so we don't provide direct access of database to the outside world. And this is a typical scenario in most environments. And now the question is, how can we restrict access of backend database to only within Kubernetes cluster? Hello and welcome to the Cluster IP service. My name is Srinath Challa. I'm a certified Kubernetes administrator. In the next few minutes, I will explain you what is Cluster IP, what does it do, and show you how do we expose your backend database only within your cluster. But before you watch this video, it is required to have a basic understanding of deployments, node port service, load balancer service, and kubectl. In case if you need a help with that, please do check the links in the description below. So without any further delay, let's take a look at the things you'll be learning as part of this video. This presentation is divided into two parts. In part one, we'll discuss the concept around cluster IP. And coming to the part two, we'll review the cluster IP demo we are about to perform on live Kubernetes cluster in advance. So this will help you better understand when you watch actually doing it live. And in this review demo, I'll show you what it goes inside the cluster IP manifest file. Then we will build the complete guestbook application stack where we use the deployments and services. After that, we'll test the use cases of cluster IP service by making sure it is working as it should be. And finally, we'll clean up what we have created in this demo. In case if you are looking for actual cluster IP demo performing above steps on live Kubernetes cluster, then please do check the links in the description below. And now let's get started with why we need cluster IP. In general, if you take a look at the complete application stack, where we have a front end pods, which are exposed to the outside world and providing access to the web application. And there is another set of pods, which are not exposed to the outside world. They are strictly internal to the company. This includes the database such as Oracle, MySQL, or some of them. All it does is to provide the functionality to the front-end apps whenever it is required. So to access these back-end pods and connect them with the front-end pods, we use a service type of called cluster IP. So choosing this value makes the service only reachable within the cluster. Cluster IP is the default service type in Kubernetes. So that's about the cluster IP in short. And now moving on to the part two, which is review demo. In this review demo, we'll deploy the guestbook example, which consists of front-end apps and the back-end database. So while deploying this app, we'll use the deployments and all three different types of services, which include node port service, load balancer service, and most importantly, cluster IP service. So you will get the complete picture. Once application is deployed, then we will test to make sure if everything is working as it should be. So let's get started. In this demo, we'll be deploying the guestbook example. It has a front end web app and back end as Redis database. So let me explain you about this guestbook app here. We enter the guest name in the text box that you see above. And then we will hit the submit button. After that, the guest name is stored in the backend Redis database. So when you access this website next time, you will see the list of all the guest names which are in the Redis database on this website. So for this to work, there are a few components needs to be created, then connected, and finally expose this guestbook app to the external world on the internet. And now let's take a look at what these components are in next slide. First, let's review the complete picture before we deploy the app so that when you're creating the components, that will be easy. As you can see now, all we have now is Kubernetes cluster and few end users who are trying to access the app or the internet. Now there are a few components that needs to be created inside this cluster. First, database. 
This is where all the guest names are stored. In our case, we will be deploying one Redis DB master and three Redis DB slaves. Second, web app. To expose and present data on web page, we'll be deploying two front-end app instances inside the cluster. All these components are created as part of this deployment. So, can you guess how many pods are created as part of these three deployments? If a guess is six, then you're right. We have one for DB master, three for DB slaves, and two for front-end apps. So, total six. Now the big question here is, how do we connect these components? Answer is services. And the final question here is, what type of service? That depends. In case if you want to expose these pods within the cluster, in this case, connecting the front-end web app to the back-end database, then we need the service type of cluster IP. In case if you need to expose these pods to the outside world, for this, we need service type of load balancer. In total, we need to create three services. One for Redis master, second one for Redis slave, and third one for front end pod. So in total, we have six objects to be created. Three for deployments and three for services. First, we'll create the deployments and then services. As we discussed, there are a total of three deployments that we need to create. First, we'll start creating the deployment for Redis master then ready slave, and finally, front-end web app. First, let's start with creating the deployment for Redis master. Here, we are deploying the Redis DB master. I believe most of us are aware of deployment config file. If not, please check out the video about deployments. Link to that video is provided in the description below. And let me save your time by not going every line in this file. But I have highlighted few settings that where it is required more focus and remaining all it should be familiar to you. So once you run this deployment using kubectl create command then redis db master will be deployed onto the cluster. Next we'll be deploying the redis slave. Here is a config file for redis db slave. As you can see we are deploying three replicas of redis db slave. Also, you might notice that this config file looks similar to the previous deployment except few changes such as container image, match labels, and replica count. Other than that, everything looks same. So once you run this deployment using kubectl create command, then Redis DB slave will be deployed onto the cluster. So now we have the backend database pods ready. And finally, it's time to create the front-end pods. Here is a config file for deploying front-end app. As you can see, we are deploying two replicas of front-end pods. Once you run this deployment using kubectl create command, then front-end pods will be deployed onto the cluster. So now we have the backend database and the front-end apps are ready deployed inside your Kubernetes cluster. And now it's time to create the services to connect these components inside your cluster and expose it to the outside world. And we'll see that in next section. Here, we need to create three services, which are Redis DB master, Redis DB slave, and frontend app. Here, Redis DB and Redis slave services will connect the frontend pods to the backend database pods using cluster IP service because they connect and operate inside the Kubernetes cluster. And finally, when we need to expose the front-end app to the outside world on the internet, then we need to create the service of type load balancer. First, let's start with creating the service for Redis DB master. Here is a service config file for Redis DB master. As you can see, the type of service we are creating is cluster IP. And we are using the same pod labels that we used as part of Redis DB master deployment previously. You can create this service by running kubectl create command followed by this config file. Once that is done, it will connect the front end pods to the back end Redis DB master. So this service will detect and connect to the pods using pod labels. Now 
Let's take a look at the service file for Redis DB Slave. In the same way, we can create another cluster IP service to connect the Redis DB Slaves to the front end ports. Here, we use the same service type, which is cluster IP. And there is one last thing, and that is exposing the app to the outside world. For that, we need load balancer. We'll see that config file in the next slide. Here is a service config file for exposing the front end pods to the outside world. For that, we need service type of load balancer. You can create this service by running kubectl create command followed by this config file. Once that is done, it will expose the front end app to the outside world. And now, end users will be able to connect and access this guestbook app. In case if you are not running your setup on any cloud platform, then you can run the service type as node port. So now we have all six objects created, which includes three deployments and three services. And now let's display and validate the objects to make sure it is created successfully. So before we execute any commands to make it easy for you, have a screenshot of the diagram placed right here for you. First, let's display the pods running in the backend. You can filter the backend pods using with labels. For that, we need to use the kubectl get pods command with label as tier equal to backend. As you can see, there are four pods, three slaves and one master. All four pods are running successfully. Next, we'll print the front end pods. You can do that by same kubectl get pods command followed by label, which is tier equal to front end. As you can see, there are two front end pods which are in running. Now, Let's display the backend service. You can do that by using kubectl get services with label as tier equal to backend. From the output, you can see there are two services running, one for Redis DB master and other for Redis DB slave. Finally, let's print the front end service. You can do that by running kubectl get services command with label as tier equal to front end. From the output, we can see the service type as load balancer and external IP ending with 135. Here, 31612 is a port on every node inside the cluster where the app is exposed. So in case if you're wondering how we got those labels, we used those same labels inside their respective deployment and services file previously. So based on our above testing, all deployments and services are created successfully. Now, in the next slide, we'll test this by accessing this guestbook web app using the external IP that you see here. Here is the app that we just deployed. And we are using the external load balancer IP to access this app. And there is one more way to access this app. And that is using the node IP and node port. We'll see that in next slide. Let's display the nodes with wide output using kubectl git command. And this will display all the nodes inside the Kubernetes cluster with an external IP. Also, we need the node port where this app is exposed. So to find that out, you can run the kubectl get service with a tier as front end. And this will show you the node port, and that is 31612. Now, we can take that any of the nodes external IP that you see here, and the node port as 31612, and then enter that in any web browser to access the guestbook app. As you can see, we are able to access the web app using the node IP and node port successfully. Even the guestbook app is not running on that node, but the service will route that request to the pod where this app is running. Now you can enter the data here in this text box and hit the submit button. After that, data will be saved in the backend Redis database that we configured. Now try refreshing the page to make sure data you entered is displayed on that page. If it's displayed, then your setup is correct. So if you recap everything, so far we have created three deployments and three services, which are required to deploy the guestbook app. And finally, we tested to make sure our setup is working and it is working successfully. Now, before we move on to the next video, let's look at the summary. Coming to the summary in part one, we discussed about the cluster IP. So the cluster IP service is exposes the service only within the Kubernetes cluster. 
This is a default service type in Kubernetes. And coming to the part two, we review the demo we are about to perform on live Kubernetes cluster. In this review demo, we have deployed the guestbook app, which consists of three deployments and two different service types, which includes cluster IP service to connect the front-end app to the back-end database, and then load balancer service to expose the front-end app to outside world on the internet. Finally, we have successfully tested by accessing the guestbook app that we deployed as a part of this demo. And now coming up next, cluster IP demo. In that demo, we'll perform the exact steps that we just discussed in this review demo. Link to that video is provided in the description below. And finally, thank you so much for watching this and I hope to see you in the next video.